CataractCoach.com, case 11 for a junior resident. Let's all give helpful advice to this beginner surgeon. Now we're showing the video at four times normal speed, and I know you're saying that's so fast, but it's okay. Now starting off here with an incision, main incision first. Now, it's okay, not too bad. Good incision architecture, hit the limbal vessels there. A Little bit of tripan blue dye going inside the eye as well. And now probably some viscoelastic. So this resin is gonna do the whole uh, staining the capsule and making the main incision, all that without viscoelastic in the eye. Now here comes the OVD. And we get the OVD injected here, getting a reasonable fill. I like having a second incision, a paracentesis at some point. And now let's take a look. Okay, there's your paracentesis now. So it's uh, not too bad, maybe a clock hour and a half away from the main incision. And another one on the other side. So maybe by manual approach here for maybe the cortex removal, we'll find out. So you got two paras. Now switching over the light to the coaxial so you can get better red reflex. And now going in with the cystitome. And let's see, pivot down. Look how we're losing some viscoelastic from the main incision here. So that's called, because we're not pivoting enough. You're pushing down the bottom floor of the floor of the incision. So you're losing viscoelastic. So this is why the AC is getting shallow now. So now I need to refill it. Again, you need to float in the incision a little bit better. So it's going to run out. You need to refill. Ah, that's a good idea. Good idea. Now, clearly, this young resident is operating with a consultant or a professor attending. Oh, no, you're not refilling. You're just using forceps now. But again, we shallowed out the AC. There, there. You see, I told you. I've done this before. Now the AC is a little bit deeper. Now you're going to have a lot easier time. you got to learn how to float in the incision. This is one of the keys to having good surgery. Pivot in the incision. Now, if you're not understanding what I'm talking about, have you downloaded the free Cataract Coach PDF book? I mean, it's free. How much more can I give you? It's free. Did I mention it's free? Got to go to leave YouTube for a minute. Go to the cataractcoach.com website. There's a link there. You can have it. It's a PDF file. Download it on your devices, on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. Send it to your friends. I don't mind. It's free. Use it to learn how to pivot in the incision. We go over that. That's not too bad of a Rex. It's, it's okay here. Now, you can see it's not ideal, but it's tolerable. For case 11, you know what? We'll take it. Now, gentle with the hydro section. Very gentle, very gentle. Try to keep that eye in primary. Now we turn the lights off for some reason. Okay, we'll go back. Got to make sure you know what your foot's doing on that foot pedal, right? Now let's see what we've got here with the nucleus. Again, is it kind of coming out of the capsule bag? See how the eye's not in primary? You need to keep the eye in primary. You want the iris parallel to the floor at all times. Now, here comes a phaco probe. Let's see the technique. Case 11, you're probably going to do like a divide and conquer here. So first things first is kind of get the eye back in primary, clean up some of the anterior cortical material to get a better view. And if you want to see this video in real speed, you can just hit that little gear button down there and slow down the YouTube video to one quarter speed and you'll see it in real time. So in real time, this took about 30 minutes. So we sped the video up to about seven. So here's a groove down the middle, nice and easy. Don't go too deep initially, take your time. This is not a very dense cataract. Now, if you want to learn divide and conquer, your ideal cataract is probably Ah, two to three plus nucleosclerosis. Probably three plus is a sweet spot. Not sure if that groove is deep enough to split right now, but let's take a look. And putting the instruments in that groove, it may not fully split. Let's see. Oh, you, you got it. Hey, I'll give it to you. There's a nice looking split. Make sure you propagate that split all the way through. And again, you, you want to keep that eye, okay, rotating the nucleus around, keeping the eye in primary, propagate that split all the way through. For case 11, you know what? You're doing a great job. Great job. Do not worry. But there are some things that definitely need improvement here. So now let's see. You've got uh, the nucleus split in half, and now you're just going to ask, well, where's the second hand? Where's the other hand? You definitely want both hands inside the eye. So we get a very soft cat. This is like maybe one to two plus nucleus sclerosis. Be careful. Oh, gosh. Whoosh. Now check out retinarounds.com. I'll tell you about retinarounds. You're going to need a retinarounds to learn how to do a vitrectomy if you keep pulling out of the eye like that. You see how the ant, the, the, the phaco tip punctured a hole in some of that cortex? You're lucky you didn't go through the bag. Oh, that was, you go back and watch that again. You should not have come out of the eye that abruptly. Now, by manual cortex removal. Oh, that was stressful for me. My pulse went way up for a second here. So those are little maneuvers that you got to avoid doing. You got to get better at this. Now, switching hands, okay. So far, so good. Again, case 11, I think you're doing great. My advice is... Probably the most important thing, you got to pivot in the incision better. You got to learn to keep the eye in primary, pivot in the incision. Don't come out of the eye so abruptly when the bag is empty because the bag will flop back and forth, right? 
Okay, now you get the lights off. Okay, maybe we're loading up a lens, perhaps. Okay, slightly enlarging the incision. Again, you're probably better off enlarging it with the eye full of viscoelastic, right? Think about that. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe we cut that part out. Again, this video was sent to me. Now, let's see, injecting the lens. And that, let's see, make sure it goes in the bag completely. So here's your lens. Let's take a look. Rotate it a little bit. And there you go. It looks like you got it in the bag. That's a nice result. So again, you're doing very well. For KC-11, fantastic. But again, remember, KC-11 is really, really very early in the learning stages here. So here I want you to practice getting better at doing things like keeping the eye primary. And again, don't shallow out the AC as much. Again, when the eye is in primary, you'll have a better chance doing that rexus without having to refill with viscoelastic. I'm glad you did refill. If you needed it, you can. And then again, everything so far is pretty reasonable. Pretty good result. Obviously, the patient's going to be pretty happy here. But there were some high-risk maneuvers that were done here that are not ideal. So, again, you got to be careful here. You don't want to have a capsule rupture too early in the learning curve. Now, certainly, in your first couple hundred cases, you are going to break the bag. For resident surgeons who are training, it's about a 6% capsule breakage rate. So, out of your first hundred cases, probably about six of them, you're going to break the bag. And that's okay. You need to learn how to manage that as well. Here's the hydration of the incisions at the end. If you're case number 11, where's the 10 on nylon? I want to see you do that 10 on nylon. Remember my rule? Can you do the 10, 10, 10? 10 sutures of 10 on nylon in 10 minutes in the wet lab. Get a grape or tomato and show me. 10 sutures, 10 minutes, 10 on nylon. Anyway, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're a young doctor especially, you got to check out retinarounds.com. You need to know that too.